Hi guys, my name is Peng, aka Bee or Honey Bee, but I would like to call myself Working Bee because I think I work too much or used to work too much. And I'm a pharmacist and I work from home. <laughs> Hey guys, how are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing well. It's been a while since I last uploaded my video here on YouTube talking about like my Netflix exam and all that and uh, how to be a licensed pharmacist in the US. As you guys know that I'm a foreign grad pharmacist from Thailand. So I mean every like bit of experience that I'm experiencing right now is kind of like new for me because we have different healthcare system back home. And I recently landed a prior prioritization pharmacist job. I'm currently working from home right now because of the pandemic and all that and to further notice anyway so i mean like i've been having a great time working from home so far and i just would i just want to share those experiences with you guys because i mean not so many people know what a part of pharmacists i mean do right because when you talk about pharmacists everybody would think like oh they were in like retail pharmacy dispensing medications and counseling patients and all that that's the you know you can see it's just like you know the general idea about like pharmacists for most people or pharmacists work in a like hospital in inpatient pharmacy or outpatient pharmacy that's you know like the general ideas that you know like people would have toward pharmacists but prior of pharmacists is something totally like I mean different for me because we don't really have like the same healthcare system like in the US so I'm so excited to share my experience uh you know being a prior of pharmacist with you guys so this video is going to be part one because like I mean there are so many things that I like to share with you guys about being a prior art pharmacist and you know it's just like there's a lot of like you know information that I like to share so I mean I'll try to like do that briefly just for you guys to have like general ideas what we are doing as a prior art pharmacist. So before I start like talking about my experience, I just want to put it out there that this is my personal experience and there's a lot that I don't know about like, you know, being a prior art pharmacist and, you know, or like, you know, what's really out there because, you know, first of all, I'm a foreign grad pharmacist. I'm not from here I, and I've only been working as a prior art pharmacist for like a few months. I think this is my fourth month in and you know i'm so excited <laughs> for the future to come and i just there might be something that i might misunderstand or you know like i might not be able to like like you know express them like like you know like I don't want to say incorrectly, but you know everything that I'll be saying in this uh, video will be based on my personal experience. So if there's something that I miss or something that you guys know that I don't know, please just let me know. Um, I'm, I'm all ears. You know, I I like to learn more. So what is like to be a prior authorization pharmacist so we determine like medication coverage for patients on a certain plan on a you know like because each plan's different so the plans that i work for has like specific rules and criteria and all that so how do we get like the request we get the request via the facts or the web submission and everything comes electronically like you know to the uh, our system like and then it was just like you know 
pick one each time we call like an instance or cases. So with the fact that it's going to be like the prior auth form and the provider sometimes submit like the chart notes, the lab uh, results for certain medication or like, you know, or other additional information that the doctor would like us to reveal uh, to make our decision, you know, if we are going to approve or deny the medications. So when we receive facts or uh, the request from the web submission, the technician will like do all the input, like the data input from the facts to our system kind of like templates, you know, like, you know, and they have to make sure everything's like reflects, you know, what's on the facts and all that. And once that's done, the technician will uh, check if the patient is active on our plan or the patients, I mean, members have other like third party coverage, you know, or not. And then that would be, those information would be documented on the, on the PPA note. Like, you know, it's just, just like a note for a technician. And I was actually a technician. I mean, I was actually a prior auth technician prior you know, being a prior art pharmacist. So I mean, like, thank you for all the hard work that you guys doing, because I know it's not easy at all because I've done that too. Thank you for all your hard work. And oh yeah, let's, so once that done, and then that will be forwarded to pharmacist queue. And then we will just pick like, a case, you have to do one case at a time. I mean, obviously, you cannot do two cases at a time, it's like you can only do once, like <laughs> one at a time. Yeah, so I'll pick like one case at a time. Typically, we'll you know, you're not allowed to skip the queue, but I mean, I, was, I mean, I yeah, you have to go like from the top to the bottom, and then you just pick a case, and then you will. As a pharmacist, you know, you have to like verify all those information again, like you do in a retail pharmacy, because you know, like the patient's name, date of birth, or you know, like three factor verifications to make sure that this is the right patient and the provider's information if like the provider is valid or the the provider like has certain specialty for certain medication like the dermatologist will uh, prescribe like you know like acne stuff or you know like you know like for certain medication they require like the provider to be specialist in their field not just like you know the, the family practice like general doctor or things like that like for example like you know, the migraine medication, Neurotech, the, you know, if you're gonna go like above the quantity limit, the prescriber has to be the neurologist or the prescriber has to be in consultant with the neurologist, for example. And, and then after that, we have to check the medication's name, strength, and directions that everything has to reflect, like the facts is that you know, we receive just to make sure everything's like it's the providers requesting and, you know, and all the information. And then we will start the reviewing process by just look at the diagnosis, if it's the diagnosis is appropriate and the dosage or, you know, the strength or like what medications, what uh, medication, hold on. <laughs> what medication that the patient's like on like prior to this request because sometimes you have to consider like step therapy or things like that and then you uh, compare that to the guideline or criteria you know like you know like just like puzzle and puzzle yeah puzzle and jigsaw is just have to put like bits of information here and there to make sure that you know the medication is met 
medically necessary for the patient and if that looks good to us and we are just gonna go ahead and approve that medication for the patient and then we'll just click approved and then uh, we will send like the fax you know the approval later via the fax to the provider's office and the uh, retail pharmacy sometime if they put that fax number on there so just to let them know that hey it's, it's, it's okay to pick up your medications now we pay for your medication and all that but if we are going to deny the medication we have to provide the reasons for the denial as well like for example you're lacking like you know the uh what for example <laughs> uh like for example well mostly like for example the antipsychotic for uh, patients that are under 18 years old uh there i mean the the providers require are required to submit like the lab result like you know the blood glucose the uh, if the patient is being monitored for the EPS by using like the AM scale and you know like weight, BMI, what else, a light bit profile just to make sure that the pa those patient doesn't have like side effect for this scenario is like metabolic syndrome and and all that you know like and the provider has to be like you know like specialist like shy psychiatrist if the patients under like for example like I mean I don't remember you have to you, you, you always have to look for the guideline or that because I mean you don't remember things sometimes but for example if the patient is under like uh, 15 years old the provider has to be shy of an adolescent psychiatrist not just a general psychiatrist things like that or like in consultant with the specialist for example so we have to provide the rationale why we deny those medication and send it out and if the patient is minor under 21 year we have to make an outreach call to the provider's office before we deny the medication for the minor and apart from like set criteria and guidelines and you know and all that uh, uh, medical compendia to check the dosages and the directions and you know the duration of treatment if it's appropriate or not and then it comes to uh, the f if the medication is formulary or non-formulary if usually member has to try medications on formulary list first before we gonna approve like non-formulary you know medications because like it's I mean those are determined by like the like the states and you know like you know like and several other factors that you know I still don't know sometimes but anyway sometimes it's like step therapy you have to try this and that before you know this certain medication is you know many so many factors that comes into play I'm not gonna maybe I will like talk about this in the next video but for now so if the medication is not on the state formulary list the patient has to try certain medication first to be qualified to use like you know non formulary medications or if it's like unlisted medications on the state medications list so right and then uh, the guideline and criteria will comes into play like if it's like you know the diagnosis is legit and the duration the dosage or the necessary of like the quantity that exceed the limit like for example like the PPI I mean proton pump inhibitors like omeprazole 
things like that. Usually you just give like once daily, but there are some certain diagnoses that the PPI can be used like twice daily. You know what I mean? You just have to make sure that, you know, the whole scenario is making sense and we go ahead and approve the medication. But I mean, hold on. So like every medication has its own like criteria, you know, like for the for the, the basics like state criteria. It's just I mean it's classified by I don't know, sometimes it's just like, you know, the usage or like the mechanism of action, like, you know, or it's just general like classification so it different for each medication so once you see the medication at first you have to like go like to the criteria that that particular medication that we are reviewing belongs to and then we have to make sure that you know every piece is on the facts and the additional like, information that submitted along with the prior auth form it's just there like check off each like bullet in the particular criteria you know like for example i mean like the right if if it's like the fda approved for the indication and the duration the age of the patient for like you know for certain topical like you know like cream or ointment, like tacolimus, like ointment or cream, you know, I have to consider the age too. And, you know, if like there's duplicate therapy or drug interaction or, you know, or like, you know, things like that, it's just basically there's a list on our certain criteria for particular medication we just have to make sure that we like oversees everything you know that complies to the criteria before we approve the medication because yeah i just want to make sure that you know the it's the right medication right diagnosis and it's really really like medical necessity and all that and when sometimes you know like if it's like you know like goes accordingly to the criteria then that would be like something like you mean easy for us to make a decision to approve or deny medications right but sometimes i mean there's so many like so much gray area that we need to use our like like clinical knowledge that you know like from pharmacy school to make our decision and you know like clinical judgment for each particular cases you know so you know like like clinical judgment will come to play in that scenario and i think i will be talking about those more in the next video i don't want this video to like you know be like half an hour maybe <laughs> oh that's too long and yeah and yeah i'll be i'll be exp i'll be talking more about like you know those in the next video for sure and for now i just wanna say like it's been a great experience so far being a part of pharmacists is something totally different and there's a lot that i need to learn and you know like there's a lot more and i only do like medicaid plans right now i mean for medicare is a whole and other like you know like well there for medicare so i have no idea what's going on but yeah just like it's really interesting that you know this you know field not so many like people know about like even like pharmacists you know because it's just different and and all
on um, your next video i will be talking about like how we handle like uh peer to peer phone calls from the providers it's just like you know the providers are not necessarily happy with our decisions and sometimes they would want to appeal their request or provide us more like additional information for the medications to be approved or if that you know worst to worst come we have to like you know have you know our like uh, medical doctor give them a call back and you know and all that process in the next video well anyway i hope you guys learn a thing or two about the prior of pharmacist today and you know just remember this is from my like personal experience you know like and i only been working for a few months this is my fourth month in there might be something that i miss or you know i not necessarily clearly like fully expressed you know it's just i have to apologize you guys right here it's just solely based on my personal experience and you know i just want to share those experiences with you guys and anyway i'll see you next guy next time thank you so much for watching i hope to see you guys next time too <laughs> bye for now